everybody knows an offshore boat is designed for open water, and a skiff is designed for the flats. But what if you have to cross a little open water to get to the flats? Should you buy a new kidney belt, or could there be another option? This is the Mako 18 LTS, and there's a reason it's become so popular. What's unique about this 18 LTS is the RPS hull, which stands for Rapid Planing System. And what it does, is it puts this boat somewhere between a technical skiff and a bay boat. And what I mean by that is, you can run fairly shallow, 10 or 11 inches. But when the water picks up or you've got to cross a bay or a larger body, you've got a lot more ride comfort than you would in a flat bottom skiff. And that really lends itself to extraordinary versatility. Because let's face it, the flats aren't always right in your backyard. So what is the secret to achieve such versatility? Turns out, it's all in the hull design. First of all, the RPS hull has a tunnel at the transom with a cover to provide lift while aerating at the same time. Then, there is a U-shaped step integrated into the hull that helps shorten the running surface while reducing surface tension. On top of that, the lifting strikes have been eliminated all around the perimeter, reducing drag even further. And that RPS hull is very light and gets on plane almost immediately. It's also very maneuverable. There are limits, of course. It will slide a little if you really crank the wheel. So you gotta be prepared. But the ride comfort in the chop, impressive for an old 18 foot boat, it only draws 11 inches of water. Another impressive element of this RPS hull is the stability. So unlike a flat bottom boat, you aren't stuck only fishing in the flats. In fact, we're finding it quite comfortable out here right now in seven, eight inches of chop. Now that's not a lot of chop, but for an 18 foot boat, the stability is quite impressive. And it's not just stable. This hull feels rock solid, in part because the hull, deck, and even console are chemically bonded and mechanically fastened together. Through hulls, bow and stern eyes, fuel fill, and cleats are all stainless for corrosion resistance. There's ample storage fore and aft with closed mold laminate hatch covers that are fully finished underside. And check out the compartments, all finished in smooth gel coat. Fishing features are legit with raised fore and aft casting platforms covered in aggressive non-skid. There are six vertical flush mounted rod holders plus under gunnel rod tubes. There's an 18 gallon bait well in the console hidden under the forward cushion. The helm is spartan but efficient with lots of space for additional electronics. A cushioned cooler doubles as a helm seat and has a pivoting backrest for even more flexibility. I also really like the non-skid everywhere, including on the gunnels. And as you can see, the bow casting platform is actually curved on the sides. So you have a little bit of extra room, like an extra wide gunnel as you're transitioning from bow to stern. And standard equipment on the LTS is a Minn Kota trolling motor. So is the boat perfect? Well, no, no boat's perfect. Can you solve most of the little issues with accessories? Probably. My first issue really is there's nowhere to put small items like a cell phone and a wallet, so you're stuck leaving them in your pocket. Is the 115 Pro XS enough power? Absolutely. Would I go any less? No way. I would definitely opt for the 115. You'll notice our 115 has a jacking plate on it. I think with this boat, do that hybrid hull, you really do want that jacking plate to take advantage of the shallow water operation. So if you're looking for a versatile fishing boat, one that you can pull into shallow water with, but still has enough comfort and capability for bay running, you might want to check out an LTS from Mako. Its unique RPS hull punches well above its waistline. 